was in that travel mindset when I came back to the US. And I'm a big snowboarder. Um, I got a job at Jackson Hole as a bartender and I got a job as a kayak guide at one of the competitors. Uh, and okay. I was trying to decide between the two and I, I wanted to go to Jackson Hole. Uh, that My goal was to work at a ski resort. I wanted to go to Europe or Jackson Hole to work. And my dad um, was trying to convince me otherwise to stay here because my mom missed me. My parents were living out here yeah. and they still still do. And he's like, maybe you should just be a kayak guide. You never know. This this is a great industry, the outdoor industry. Maybe some you know we could start something up one day. Um, That's and, interesting. And so... I had no like when I started being a guy there. I had no, I had no thought of of wanting to start up my own company. Mm, maybe okay. maybe my dad was thinking elsewhere, but so uh, you weren't going in thinking I'm gonna take. Yeah, this no, I, I didn't go in thinking like I'm gonna learn everything. Yeah, and yeah. I came in being a kayak guide, um, and so I did that for about six or seven months, and I left that winter to go to Asia for for three months, and I came back um, in January of, of 2016 in the company I was working for. Um, they were doing something that's very common in the outdoor industry, and that is paying your employees incorrectly as a 1099 contractor instead of okay. a W-2. They got caught by the IRS doing that, and they then had to pay us correctly as a W-2 employee. Um, they put the entire tax burden on us. It pissed all the employees off. They, they, they made it so that they were paying the same amount of money when they were paying as a 1099 versus a W-2. Yep. Um, and so we took on the whole tax burden and, and we made probably, uh, we weren't making much as it was, but if, if we were making 40K a year the year before, we were making like 28 now. And so gotcha. everyone got really mad. Um, and he kind of bragged revenue numbers to me, what they did that year before this all went down. Gotcha. So I kind of took those numbers and, and brought it to my dad and uh, we discussed it uh, and, and it made sense and it was a, a great industry. I loved doing it. Mm, and I was gonna say, you got a taste of how much you I, liked I, it. I, I loved doing it and, and I wanted to uh, pursue it as a career. And so um, we put what we thought was what we needed. We had fifty thousand um, dollars, and, and we thought that's what's going to be able to start this company. And within two weeks of buying stuff, we now <laughs> knew that it was going to be a lot more than that. And so uh, it went from fifty, and I think our initial investment had to be upwards of two hundred fifty thousand, which what was did it really? way over what we Damn. expected. Did it's, you? Uh, was your dad able to help you fund it? Did you? Yeah, have to he did. He, well, a little bit of both. He did. Okay. He. he he helped um, and he was the part owner too. He owned 50% of the company. Um, he did the back end, he did the, the taxes, he did the marketing, he did all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then he, he put um, a lot of the capital up. Okay. Uh, I, I was on, I had to do what's called sweat equity. So- um, Do the work. I had to do the work without yeah. getting paid until the, the, there was enough equity in both, which okay. took about three years gotcha. uh, of pretty much working without um, any real pay. Like there was cost of living adjustments and stuff like that, but it was three years of, of 100 hour weeks easily um, to, to get up to there. But like I was going back to it, we, we thought it was going to be, you know, we, we did the uh, breakdown on, on how much we're going to need. What we ran into was it's very hard uh, as a new company to, to borrow, um, to buy vehicles on on loan and stuff like that. So yeah, credit, you know, yeah the credit, right? it, it was just impossible. So we ended up having to pay everything in cash. Okay, and, and were you so, buying secondhand and- Yeah, we were buying secondhand and-, and uh, So you're being as resourceful as you possibly could. And, and we needed to be able to grow the business quickly. And to do that, you need capital. We, we, uh, we brought in a couple employees to begin with. Um, we bought maybe 12 boats, one bus, one trailer. Um, and we needed to be able to get tours running to be able to get our search engine optimization for our, our website to drive traffic there. Okay. So we did what every company doesn't want to do and, and that was go on Groupon. Groupon, uh, we referred to it uh, back then as crack because it felt really good because you got the bookings coming in, but they discount your product upwards of 60% and then well, take, not a, really making anything, take a 40% commission. No, we weren't making anything, but we knew that going into it. But, but, we, had... but we needed to get people driven to our website. We needed mm. to get reviews. We needed to you get- You had momentum. Yeah, and, and we did that for a full year and uh, easily lost a substantial amount of money. Gotcha. Um, it, it might have covered labor, but wouldn't cover any other costs on top of it. Uh, and, and so after that first year, we 
we did what you needed to do. A lot of people, it depends on how you structure your company. We wanted to start off big and then be able to build from there instead of just taking out two people a day, one person a day. We wanted to take out 20 people a day and so that we could then take out, like today is a small day for me and we have about 90 people going out. Okay. Labor Day weekend, I had uh, our biggest day at 130 people, and that's what we wanted to build mm-hmm. to. And, and luckily, you not big, you yeah, not do that. And if we did it the other way, which would have been just me running tours, um, it could have been. Uh, we uh, we don't know what so it you could took, have been. You took more risk to get high further risk. quicker. High, high risk, high reward. Um, okay, but, but I, I could have easily been, and I know you know some of the other companies out there. I could be doing. Uh, you know the tours and it's probably more profitable in the short run of taking two to ten people out as the owner by yourself running out of your garage Mm -hmm. um, not having high insurances and and stuff like that Uh, but we wanted to build a company to maybe one day sell or or be able to retire on Um, that's interesting so that's really interesting that was the idea from the beginning otherwise we never would have gone through that that Groupon phase, and and we've never done Groupon since, and we probably never will. No offense to anyone that does Groupon, it's it works for some people. It just depends on how you structure your company. It's great. It gets you customers. I mean, we went from not a phone call for, and we went live on our website for like two weeks, and you know we went live thinking that oh we're gonna get phone calls daily. It's just gonna start flowing in. It just doesn't work like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then we you know we signed up with Groupon, and then. It went from zero bookings to uh, the phone wouldn't stop ringing until four in the morning just because they push you because they we offered them a very good rate group on you yeah know, the more you let them discount the more they're going to make money off of you because they're getting a 40 percent commission gotcha. That's i think interesting. It's, i think it's changed since mm. since that time period but at that time it was 40 percent. the industry standards 25 like